call myself an, an accidental cheesemaker, um, but what I'm really here to talk to you about today is um, and to encourage is a, is a shift in thinking about accidents, um, not to see those as uh, catastrophes, but, but as potential occurrences that, are, that may be very ripe with opportunity. In fact, I'm going to give an entire presentation off of one of Paul's slides, which is basically on mistakes. And I've got a number of mistakes that are some of my favorite things on the planet. Some of the best things, the, the things that I enjoy every day when I can, started as and began as, as accidents. At the top of that long list um, is, is, well, is me, so I'm told. Um, a happy accident, I hope. Um, so as I lift my glass to my parents' um, unplanned behavior. Um, I hope that that glass that I left is filled with my, my second glass, I mean my, my, my second favorite uh, accident, which is champagne. So there was a monk who continued to um, explode bottles of wine in that ancient cellar and, and perplexed at why they continued to explode, but I'm, I'm very happy that he um, didn't give up on that accident and that someone somewhere said this is a good thing. I call champagne a glass of happy and it, and it finds itself in my kitchen and around my tables as I do the thing that I love, which is to celebrate with food and, and do one of the simple List, um, most pleasurable things, which is to break bread with the people that I love and I care about. And then, you know, the third really on that list or at the top of the, the list of all those um, things that I love on the planet that started as accidents is, um, well, very fittingly, is cheese. So as an accidental cheesemaker, I'm happy to know that um, cheese began, too, as an accident. Ancient travelers would transport milk um, in the dried stomachs of ruminant animals, and the, that could be cows or sheep and or, or goat, and since I'm a goat cheese maker, we're, and this is my story, we'll just say that was in a goat. And the the milk would be transported in these in these stomachs, and would, the traveler or transporter would end up invariably not with milk from how they started, but with curds and whey. Curds, as you know, is the you know that beginning place for all the cheeses that 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 we enjoy today. And what we found sometime later is that there was an enzyme that's in the stomach lining of these ruminant animals called rennet. And rennet is what we use today to make the cheese that you will later enjoy in, in the lobby on a break that we make. Um, I, I call myself an, an accidental cheesemaker for various reasons, but for one is that I had no idea that that was cheesemaking. Cheesemaker was a choice that one could make. I didn't, I never saw it on the list. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a course that was taught at the school that I went to. I'm pretty sure that's not offered here at Randolph on, on course selections as cheesemaking. Um, and then even later in my life when I went to culinary school, it, it's, it, it wasn't on the list. So what I did is I went to college, like most of us do, and I, I ended up studying what I loved. And what I loved was English literature and often got a hard time about that. Why would you do such a thing as study English literature? And what are you going to do with that? And, and I would always answer with it, well, whatever I choose. Um, again, I had no idea that one day I would choose, that choice I would make would be to be a cheesemaker. But I, I, I left school and I, I ended up in um, doing something that was really exciting at the time in this internet technology space and I spent more than a decade there. Um, and it was, it was fast paced and it was challenging and I learned a lot and I enjoyed it. But my true passion was, is, um, you know, had probably had always been um, for food and, and, and doing you know, that, that simple pleasurable thing is cooking for people and celebrating with um, breaking, you know, celebrating with food and breaking bread with them. And, and so I took, a, I took a break at one point in the middle of my career and I took a, a week and I enrolled in a course at the Culinary Institute of America. And the title of that class was called Career Exploration. So what I found in that week is I found myself surrounded by people just like me. Um, disgruntled professionals. Um, we had bankers and, and, and lawyers and brokers in that, in that class that I spent a week with who were doing the exact same thing that I was doing, is trying to figure out what to do with this passion that we all had for food. How do you turn an avocation into a vocation? Cheesemaking was still not on the list there. but so. 
I ended up being encouraged enough to enroll as a student at the, the CIA and, and took, um, we had weekends off and I took one weekend and I, and I pointed east at the, the time, the culinary mecca was in Manhattan and a, a gourmet food store called Dina DeLuca. And, I'm, and I go there to, with the express purpose of um, tasting and trying and seeing all of these wonderful foodstuffs from all over the planet. And what I end up finding is, you know, from these selections of cheeses from all over the planet, um, all over the world, these, these beautiful cheeses, I pick up one and it says on the label, made in Elkmont, Alabama. Well, that is the beginning, that chance moment, that happy accident, that bumping into, um, ended up being the thing that, that made me change my entire life. Now, it's a little sobering to think that um, a piece of cheese has the ability or the power to change someone's life. Well, maybe not too sobering, because remember I told you we have lots of champagne and cheese at my house. So, um, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, we're told often, or, you know, we, we say this to our children and we, and, we, and we talk in front of one another about, um, we even have proverbs and, and stories that we tell that's, that teach us this lesson, that, that bad luck or accidents aren't always accidents. Things aren't as they seem. So learn from others is what we're told. Learn from my mistakes. Um, learn from me and the things that, that, I, that I did wrong. Um, I feel extremely fortunate to have surrounded myself with in, in my career and in my life with people who have been, who have been bold enough, um, brave enough, and open enough to see that some things that everybody else might, maybe in that curve that Paul talked to us about, that everybody else might see as an accident or as a catastrophe, that those, those places are really ripe with opportunity. Um, you know, we are, you know, there's even a proverb that I love that talks about this. It says, bad luck, really bad luck. And, and, and proverbs um, are really lessons in the form of, a, of telling a story, right? TEDx knows this. We, we, we teach and we inspire through telling stories. And one of my favorite proverbs is a, is a Chinese proverb about a farmer. And this farmer um, has two things that he loves more than anything else in the world. And those two things are his son, his only son, and his horses. And so one day, one of his, his well, not one of his, his prize stallion, his favorite horse, gets out, escapes, is gone. And the villagers come, the, his neighbors come to say, you know, rapidly they, they appear and they say, we are so sorry. We, for your bad luck. What terrible misfortune that you have had to lose this horse. And he simply responds with, we'll see. Well, a couple of days later, the stallion returns, and not only does the stallion return intact and unscathed, but that stallion returns with a beautiful mare. So the villagers, of course, come rapidly to tell him how happy they are for him and how wonderful that he had such, he has such good fortune, not only to have his stallion back, but to have this beautiful mare too. Such good fortune. A couple of days later, his son, his only son, takes off riding on that mare and they take off across the field and she slips and she falls and she rolls on top of the sun and breaks his leg. The villagers and his neighbors of course come rapidly and they tell him we are so sorry for your misfortune. How terrible, what awful bad luck that you have that your son, your only son, now has this horrible injury. They even go so far as to say, you should have that mare put down. The farmer says, it was an accident, no one's at fault. They continue to exclaim, what terrible bad luck. The farmer responds with, again, we'll see. The villagers at this point think he's a little crazy. You know, something's off with this guy, this we'll see. And so sometime later, the, you know, they go off, so we're not going to come back. And sometime later, the country goes into war. The son is not able to be drafted for that war because of his broken leg. The rest of the villagers, young men, they go and they and go into war. And like most wars are, 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 um, are dangerous places. A lot of those sons then perish in that war. So we'll see. We are taught that not all things that are, are as they seem, not all things are bad, not all things are um, accidents, but could be opportunity. Now I will tell you, 
that I am not that girl that learns well from others. If my mother had to tell me not to touch that flame on the stove, of course, I touched it and I had to be burned myself. So not a, not a quick learner necessarily. It took me a good long time from that, that chance finding of that cheese in New York City, that happy accident, that bumping into a product for me to change my entire life. Some, you know, close to seven years went by before that, before that time. So now, here I am standing in front of you calling myself an accidental cheesemaker. Happy accident? We'll see. Thank you.